Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Dr. Andrew Kirkendall from Moffitt Cancer Center. Monday Morning Joe is a quick-hitting, Coffee Talk-style five-episode series on the latest and greatest in advanced systemic mastocytosis with associated myeloid neoplasms. Please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and make sure notifications are turned on to be prompted when new episodes are released. Today, we're going to discuss the heterogeneous clinical presentations of systemic mastocytosis with associated hematologic neoplasms. So what is systemic mastocytosis, or SM as we'd say? Obviously, it's a heterogeneous group of diseases. And, and really can be kind of separated into either advanced systemic mastocytosis or non-advanced systemic mastocytosis. And by far the most common presentation is non-advanced systemic mastocytosis, which comprises 80 to 95% of these cases. Uh, and within this, you have the, the probably most common form, which is indolent systemic mastocytosis, or ISM, and then the somewhat more rare uh, smoldering systemic mastocytosis. A subset of systemic mastocytosis falls into the category of advanced SM. This is somewhere between 5 and 20% of cases. Uh, and within advanced SM, you have three main subtypes. You have mast cell leukemia, aggressive systemic mastocytosis, or ASM, or systemic mastocytosis and associated hematologic neoplasm. Uh, this is also kind of being uh, called now associated myeloid neoplasm. This is truly the myeloid neoplasms that most commonly occur with systemic mastocytosis. And so when we think about systemic mastocytosis with an associated hematologic neoplasm, we think about this as really uh, an advanced form of SM that from the systemic mastocytosis side of things is really driven by an abnormal accumulation of these mast cells. And these have to be really shown in one or more extracutaneous organs. So not on the skin, but, but you're seeing these mast cells either show up in the bone marrow or some other non-skin uh, organ. Um, but also you're seeing uh, the presence of some other hematologic malignancy uh, that is not a mast cell neoplasm, so something like CMML, myelodysplastic syndrome, something like that. And when we think about uh, the, the associated hematologic neoplasm, uh, in the past this really was open to any hematologic neoplasm, but really it's, it's more so uh, myeloid neoplasms that we're focusing on because this is really what, a, what accompanies mastocytosis in 80 to 90 percent of cases. The most common um, are probably CMML, myelodysplastic syndrome, myeloproliferative neoplasms, uh, and these otherwise overlap syndromes where there's features of myeloproliferative neoplasms and myelodysplastic syndromes. When we think about the prognosis of SMH, and uh, it's relatively poor with a median overall, overall survival of around two years, but a lot of that depends upon what the associated hematologic neoplasm is. If the hematologic neoplasm that's associated with the systemic mastocytosis is an acute leukemia, well, that's going to have a different prognosis than maybe uh, the associated neoplasm being a low-grade myelodysplastic syndrome. And again, you have to figure out <clears throat> not just the aggressiveness or the features of the associated hematologic neoplasm, but also how aggressive the systemic mastocytosis component is as well. So what's the, what's the prevalence of these types of... Well, these are very clearly rare diseases. Um, when we think about all forms of systemic mastocytosis, they occur in about 1 out of every 10 to 20,000 people. Uh, and then when we think about systemic mastocytosis with an associated hematologic neoplasm, it's occurring in 1 to 9 out of 100,000 people. Um, but it does comprise probably the most common form of, of advanced systemic mastocytosis, albeit you know, this being a rare, rare subtype of systemic mastocytosis. So why does this uh, disease have a heterogeneous clinical presentation? Well, I think there's a lot of different moving parts. Um, obviously, we're dealing with uh, a combination of diseases, right? Systemic mastocytosis, some other myeloid neoplasm, and there's various different forms of those diseases that can, uh, can occur. And so you're talking about uh, multiple different presentations of multiple different diseases that can affect, you know, obviously patients that have their own individual features as well. And so really you get a, a, a widely heterogeneous um, disease entity. So what symptoms should raise clinical suspicion for systemic mastocytosis within the primary care setting? You know, I think that this is one of the most challenging things because we know that these can be very difficult cases to diagnose in general. Um, when we think about systemic mastocytosis symptoms, we often think about allergic type symptoms. Mast cells are obviously these mediators, these cells that mediate allergic reactions, things like anaphylaxis or, or uh, allergies and hives and urticaria. Um, and so if you see someone who's presenting with flutching, ishing, hives, uh, recurrent anaphylaxis, um, uh, frequent food allergies, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, bone pain, recurrent uh, syncopal episodes, uh, uh, wheezing, dyspnea, 
uh, with a variety of allergens, um, it, it, as well as maybe things like enlarged spleen or enlarged liver or uh, itching on the skin, something we call urticaria pigmentosa, which shows up as kind of freckle uh, looking skin, uh, skin rashes that can get red and, uh, and be quite pruritic. Um, these are all types of things that can occur in someone with systemic mastocytosis. Now, not every patient has to have all of these things, but, but some of these can occur. The other thing to think about is if this person is, also has abnormal blood counts, then you might think that there is uh, an additional hematologic disease that may be accompanying some of these symptoms, so maybe a multiple, a multiple things going on. So why do these symptoms occur? Again, you know, this, these are diseases that are driven by an overproduction of these mast cells. These are the cells that mediate allergic reactions, and so if you make too many of them, they have a tendency to degranulate or react more frequently to, to different exposures. And so every patient's different. Every mast cell tends to react to different types of, uh, of triggers. But when these, when these mast cells do react and release these, uh, these granules, uh, it can trigger these more systemic reactions. Uh, these granules contain things like histamine and heparin, proteases, and they recruit other uh, uh, blood cells to, to, to cause more systemic and more profound reactions than you might otherwise expect. So when we think about all of this, I think what are the take-home points here? Well, first I would say that SMHN is a really rare disease with a heterogeneous presentation. Uh, episodic symptoms such as flushing, rashes, anaphylaxis, diarrhea, nausea may prompt a workup for a mast cell disorder or a mast cell disease. Uh, and really, SMHN should be something you think about when you, when you see that there's ab abnormal blood counts or another hematologic disease occurring in association with these symptoms. An SMHN can cause problems related to mast cell overproduction, mast cell degranulation, or are symptoms related to the associated hematologic neoplasm. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube page. Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe.